most fabulous plants for summertime planting in our gardens is basil. And there's so many varieties to choose from. Now basil likes warm temperatures, so don't put it out before temperatures get in the 50s or you'll have to cover it at night to keep it from uh, getting affected by the cold. It likes a fairly rich soil, so add lots of compost. It likes consistent mo moisture and mulch basil, but not too close to the stem. Basil has very few insect pests. Snails and slugs do often like the young plants, so you'll be mindful of that. But um, it actually attracts bees to our garden, so it's great to get those pollinators into the garden. Now, sweet basil are the ones that we typically think of for pesto, and there's so many wonderful varieties to choose from. Uh, this variety, New Far, is a fairly new introduction to basil, and it's fusarium resistant. So if you've had problems growing basil in the past, you might look for new far. Now, a, a secret to growing basil to get really nice, healthy, bushy plants is to do some early trimming. So when your basil is getting established and uh, looking good, just pinch out those tops. You can take that in the kitchen and cook with it. But when you do that, it will begin to have a branch here and here, and then also here and here. So you get bigger, stockier, bushier plants that will uh, just look a lot better in your garden and be healthier too. That's very important to getting going with basil. Now another basil that's kind of nice because it's unusual looking is this variegated leaf uh, uh, pesto perpetuo, and it's a very thin columnar basil. It's not a real big bushy basil, so great for narrow spaces, and it'll get up to about 30 inches tall. It has a little bit milder clove flavor uh, than the uh, some of the other sweet basils. The uh, Genovese, or lettuce leaf basil, has large crinkly leaves. These leaves will often be four to six inches wide, so it doesn't take very many to put into a dish. It's a really lovely plant. It gets about two feet tall. Another great basil is the Aussie Sweetie. Now this one has a little citrus scent uh, and a little less clovey scent, but it's a really nice sweet basil. And uh, the unusual thing about this one is it really doesn't bloom. So you can keep this one going in the garden and not have to worry about cutting blooms all the time. And uh, there are also a number of citrus basils that are really great for using in the kitchen. Now this is the Sweet Danny Lemon. And and it tends to be kind of a short basil, about 15 inches tall. It seeds frequently, so you really have to keep the seeds cut off this one to keep it in production. Like most uh, annuals, once basil sets seeds, then it's done with producing leaves and the, the essential oils that give them their flavor goes into seed production so the leaves aren't as flavorful, the stems get woody and uh, they just won't do as well in your garden. Now a variety of lemon that I much prefer is the Mrs. Burns lemon basil. This gets about 30 inches tall and it's a big lush plant, not as prone to blooming. This one sets seeds and comes back from seed very well in my garden too. And it's just a wonderful plant. I use the leaves in salads. It makes a great lemon pesto and uh, great on vegetables too. It's really one I highly recommend, the Mrs. Burns lemon basil. And then another kind of unusual one is the lime basil. Uh, this one, like the lemon basil, tends to produce seeds a lot. And I find both the, this lemon and the lime prefer a little bit of afternoon shade. Now this one is in a lot of bloom already. So I would take that back about halfway. When your basils are blooming, you really need to cut them back hard. So uh, when you cut them back halfway, that plant gets out of flower production and goes into leaf production again which is what we want. Now you can cook with these flowers. They're edible. You can use them in pestos and soups. So uh, don't toss those flowers away. Use them in flower arrangements too. You'll love having some of these unusual basils in your garden.